We all deal with insecurity, inferiority, or unworthiness to a greater or lesser extent. Once again, we will deal with extreme situations that are dysfunctional and disabling. Insecurity is a lack of confidence or assurance or self-doubt. We've all dealt with that. It's a function of our sinful nature. A amen. And isn't the enemy there when you're in a place where you're feeling insecure about something, doing a job or, or taking on a new responsibility or anything that you're dealing with uh, that's new to you? And what is he doing? The enemy is whispering, oh, you can't do it. You're, you're, you're going to be fit. You're going to be a failure. You don't have what it takes. You're a hopeless case. You're, you're out of your depth. I mean, you hear these things. We hear these things on a continual basis. We fight the good fight of faith. So we take every thought captive and make it obedient to Christ Jesus. How do you make it obedient to Christ Jesus? You neutralize it. You disarm it by declaring the word of God over it. You just don't ignore these fiery darts that the enemy shoots through your mind. We just let them go. No, you arrest those thoughts. You take them captive and you declare over them the word of God to nullify them and disarm them. Amen? And that takes patience, and it takes practice. It takes discipline to do that. Don't let those errant words settle themselves in your heart and take you in the wrong direction or put such despair in you or confusion in you that it disables you. We need to be strong in the Lord and in the power of His might through the Word of God and the Spirit of God in this particular season especially. Amen? So insecurity is something that we all deal with to a greater or lesser extent. Extreme, chronic, dysfunctional insecurity is a totally different thing. And you will find a spirit, once again, working through that. You will find some of these people who are in such a desperate situation, a disabling situation, you will find that the enemy uses their insecurity against them to condemn them. He will also send people into their lives to demean them and reinforce insecurity in them. How many of you experienced that? I've experienced that. At a time when I was in a place of insecurity, I had to trust God. I was in a vulnerable place in my life. But praise God, it led to a breakthrough in my life. A complete breakthrough. Amen? And God wants to give you breakthrough in those areas of your life if there are insecurities in you. He does not want this to disable you, to hinder the work of the Holy Spirit in your life, to fulfill God's promises and God's calling and commission upon your life. God wants you to move undeterred into His perfect will. Amen? Now, we see that in extreme cases, research shows us that some insecure people will try to mask it by being an imposter, pretending, playing a role. Others you'll see, and you may see this in the world that you're dealing with and engaging each and every day, some will actually, through rebellion, try to mask their insecurity. They'll just have that rebellious spirit. Nobody's going to tell me what to do. I'm tough. I can take it. And so when you see that, that's a sign that underlying that is a deep sense of inadequacy and insecurity. That is a facade. That is a wall behind which they hide. Now, we need to be compassionate for people that you engage, we engage on a daily basis. Others play the victim to mask insecurity. And so it's about victimization. And so we need to be aware that we need to walk in the love in the compassion, in the wisdom, in the counsel of the Lord when we approach this. We must approach these situations, especially if they're in our families, we must approach it with great wisdom and prayer. Amen? Extremely important. So those who are in extreme insecurity, insufficiency, inadequacy, sense of unworthiness, these people, without question, have the devil gaining a foothold in their lives. Now what's interesting is that for the believer, insecurity, if I yield to insecurity, 
I am actually denying what Jesus did on the cross because it's for freedom that I've been set free. Jesus died on the cross so that I will not be insecure. I'm not going to be condemned to my past. I'm not going to be walking in shame and condemnation. There's no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. And so whom the Son sets free is free indeed. And so there's a difference between insecurity and identity. And we want to make that distinction here because your identity in Christ is clearly revealed in Scripture. And we live by the Word of God. And we are God's children. And so God's children are created for a purpose. The enemy will li would want to lie to us and claim that we we're just there wandering, we're just there drifting. There's no purpose. That's a lie from the pit of hell. When God creates you, he creates you for a purpose. When a manufacturer makes a product, he designs the product for a purpose. You must go to the one who manufactures the, pro the product to get the manual. This is the manual. You want to understand you, you want to understand God, you want to understand why people are the way they are, this is the manual. And the manual was written by the Creator Himself. And you have access to the wisdom of the ages. You have access to the truth. And this is God's Word. It is at your fingertips. Use it to the glory of God. Allow it to instruct you and to inform you and to empower you and to give you wisdom as you navigate through a hostile and a dark and a hurting world. Amen? Now, you may find some people that are so insecure that they are rebellious or even hostile. Once again, that is a facade. They can be very contrary. They can be very difficult to deal with. They can be abusive. Many of us have experienced abuse. How many of you have experienced abuse that have, has robbed you of confidence? That's the enemy. But those people who will belittle are themselves little in their own eyes. If I have to belittle someone else to feel good about myself or to assert my authority or to assert my reputation, if I have to belittle others, it shows you that I am little on the inside. And the only way that I can enlarge myself is to cut people down. And we have all experienced that. Amen? Haven't we? How do we deal with that? You deal with it through prayer and through God's Word and the leading of God's Spirit. This is what walking in the Spirit is all about. Dealing with a hostile world, with hostile people, those opposed to God and to His people and to the work of the kingdom. That's what we're up against. We are swimming against the tide. We are all swimming against the tide, and that's why serving God can take a lot of focus, energy, and determination and perseverance because you're swimming against the tide, you are swing, swimming upstream, and everyone else is going in the opposite direction. Amen? And so God wants you to empower you and to give you confidence because insecurity is a lack of confidence, a lack of confidence in God, a lack of confidence in our ability to hear from God and to obey God. You see that? So anything that I place my identity in other than Christ is actually idolatry. And so our, our identity is in Christ and Christ alone. Amen? So you will find people in the world who have this disabling chronic insecurity and it presents a dichotomy because on the one hand they project a public image of superiority and hyperconfidence and on the other hand privately they are cringing with self-doubt and with a lack of confidence and a sense of inferiority 
I saw a picture. It was fascinating. I saw a picture of a young lady in her early 20s, and she was preparing a little episode, a little picture, a little clip, a video clip on Facebook of her life. And they photographed her doing this. And she did this in the corner of her room. And so in this tiny corner of her room, she had everything perfectly placed, beautifully decorated. She had something on the wall. She had a flower. She had a nice little neat desk. She had her computer on the desk. She was all made up, every hair in place. And they showed the picture of this young lady. And that little corner was the picture of perfection. But when you zoom out and see the whole picture, her room looked like a tornado hit it. It was like everything was crazy. And so that is somebody in the world who is so deeply insecure that they have to project an image to the rest of the world. We know that the king of Israel, Saul, was a man who was heads above other men. He was a very impressive sight to the people of Israel. And yet, there was something in his life that could explode, and it was deep insecurity. In fact, when he was to come and be revealed to the people of Israel, he was hiding. And people, no doubt, must have thought, oh my goodness, he's a real humble guy. He's a real nice, humble guy. He's going to make a great king. No. He was hiding because he was insecure. And when power came to this man, he was ruthless. In fact, the people wanted to know where Saul was. Where is this king, this next king of Israel? And the Lord said he's hiding behind the baggage. And sometimes they will hide behind the baggage because they don't want the real self to be revealed to the world. And so they'll take that baggage and they'll wallpaper it to pretty it up. It's like what they did on Long Island. They took a toxic waste dump they put sod over it and grew a few petunias. So it's pretty to look at, but it's filled with de death and toxicity. You see that? And so all of this is a pretense. Do you have any idea how much energy goes into maintaining and sustaining a pretense? It's draining. You may have people like this in your family. Once again, I am not directing this to you. I am directing this to people that you will encounter who meet these criteria. When you meet them, you need prayer and wisdom. Because those in this state of insecurity will be hypersensitive. They will be easily offended. It's like walking on eggshells. You don't know what to say to them. You don't know what to do. You want to throw up your, heart, your hands and run away. And that's what the devil wants. Because the devil wants to isolate these people. The devil doesn't want people of faith to speak life. The devil want, doesn't want people who are powerful in walking in the spirit and powerful over demonic forces to cast them out of a person's life like this. Because they, the devils know when you know Jesus. And they know when you don't know Jesus. Amen? And so in their insecurity, they need people to come and to speak the truth to them and to minister to them. But very often in their insecurity and their pride, they will keep people at a distance because they want to hide the real self. Do you know what's interesting? God is looking for someone who will build up the wall and stand in the gap for these people. And it may just be that they're in your family for a reason because you are a believer. I knew 
we have these ethnic families in New York. I knew this mom. She was a mom over a large ethnic family. She had sons who were big guys, big, exec tough guys, strong men, executives in the corporate world. She had daughters that were very, very bright and successful women. And this mom, who was like four foot ten, not a very imposing figure, and yet she ruled that family because of her insecurity. When the family would get together, they were like walking on eggshells because they didn't want to offend her. And what she would do is she would take all of her children individually and make them think that they were, each person, each child was her favorite. And she would talk about the other child. And so seeds of discord. She would make each child believe that they were her favorite. And so you divide and conquer. And no believers were in this family. So no one knew the spiritual dynamic of what was happening. And the woman, the mom herself, was being played by the devil because of her insecurity. And when these families got together for Thanksgiving or for Christmas or for any special occasion or birthday, they would cringe because the atmosphere was so negative and toxic. You could cut the tension with a knife and no one ever dared to confront this. Now, if there was a believer in that family, that believer would have gone to a prayer partner and prayed to break the stronghold over this mom's life and over the family so that there would be peace and joy and Jesus would be enthroned over that family and salvation would come to that family and hope and blessing and fruitfulness will come to that family. But the family was filled with oppression and insecurity and strife because what she did is she communicated her insecurity to the next generation and to the next generation. She affected at least two or three generations. You see this? Is this not important? We need wisdom from heaven in dealing with this world. Amen? And so Saul was hiding behind the baggage. And the problem with people like Saul is that he was threatened because of his insecurity. He was threatened by David and David's success. David slew his, his, Saul slew his thousands. David slew his tens of thousands. People were singing that, and Saul became irate. He had no reason to hate David. And it was like Cain and Abel. You see, it started with insecurity and pride. And from that sprang envy. And from that sprang resentment and bitterness. And from that sprang violence. And it came to a point where Saul was so enraged, enraged and deranged that he was going to kill David. He almost killed his own son, Jonathan. And so this kind of toxic insecurity is dangerous. And you can only deal with this by prayer and fasting. You see, whatever level you come to in God, there's a different devil at every level you have to deal with. There's a new devil at the new level. You want to go higher? There's greater devils you've got to deal with. Because the devil wants to resist the work of the Holy Spirit in your life. He does not want you to be effective for Jesus. He does not want the power of God to be released in your life. He wants to keep you insecure. He wants to keep you negative. He wants to keep you faithless. He wants to keep you hopeless. And he wants to keep you disabled. Amen. But we are men and women of another sort. Amen? We are men and women of another sort. And the devil met his match not because of us, but because Christ lives in us. Because we are surrendered and submitted to Jesus. 
So we are the real deal if we are in Christ. We are transparent. We don't have to pretend. We don't have to impress other people. We don't have to keep up appearances. What you see is what you get. I worked in a, in, in a farm, as I've shared many times with you, and when I was in the barn, and I had the wonderful responsibility of cleaning up the manure pits, and it's amazing how cleaning up manure pits and cleaning toilets builds character in a young kid, especially a city slicker. And so I came to that barn every day. We milked the cows, we cleaned the barn, and I noticed that the lights were growing dim in the barn. And I figured, well, they need new bulbs. But there were glass, transparent glass sleeves over the bulbs in the barn to protect the bulbs. And so I walked up to the bulb, and I pulled the glass sleeve off, and I saw that there was debris and filth that had accumulated from the barn. And so I cleaned the lens, and the, the light shone brilliantly. You see, the problem was not in the bulb. It was in the lens. The problem with us is not in the bulb. The light is of Jesus Christ, the light of the world. He is shining brilliantly in us. The problem with us is the soul, is the flesh, has been contaminated and sullied. There's debris on the lens, and it needs to be cleansed so that the light of Jesus can shine from us with all of his incandescence and his brilliance illuminating the world around us. Amen? And so I, clean, I cleaned that lens and I was amazed. Now you could actually see through it. Now it's transparent. It was translucent. Now it's transparent. And nothing inhibits the shining of that light. And what does that mean in our lives? How do we clean the lens? We renew and restore our souls. We must be renewed by the Word of God. Be transformed by the renewing of your mind. And so we restore our soul by being faithful to God and repenting and doing His will, and it is washed with water by the Word. And that's how you become transparent before God. There are no pretenses. You take all of that burden of trying to impress people and to pretend that you are something that you're not. What you see is what you get. And let Jesus shine out of you because it's not about you anyway. You see, to those who are chronically, who are very chronically insecure, it's about them. It's all about them. It's not about Jesus. The Bible says that we're to fix our thoughts on Jesus. We're to fix our eyes on Jesus, the writer of Hebrews says. And so if I am preoccupied with self, with insecurity, with my inadequacies, with my insufficiencies, these people are all about them. They're like a black hole. A black hole is a region in time-space, in space-time, where there is great density and gravity. And it's moving very quickly. And anything that comes into its sphere is drawn into it. It's like a cosmic vacuum cleaner. Even the very light that came from this place now is turned inward. And that's how insecurity could be. Insecurity can turn our light inward so others don't see it. And insecurity can also draw others into our issues. And that's the danger. Some of these people I'm talking about, many of them are in the world, and even in your family, they will, they will draw the life out of you. They will try to draw you into their drama. Do you see that? Greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. They will draw, and they will take you in. And what's interesting about a black hole is that the area around the black hole actually warps space-time. So when you enter that realm of someone who is in extreme dysfunctional insecurity, 
it will warp your perceptions. It will warp your thinking. And the people that they have offenses against, you can pick up those offenses and it can affect you. You can be drawn into their gravitational pull. And it could draw the very light and life out of you and drain you. That's why you have to be very careful. And I know some of you now are thinking of people in your own families who are in this place. Have compassion on them. Pray for them. And know that the Lord your God is with you. He is fighting your battles. The battle is the Lord's. He has equipped you with every spiritual weapon that you need to fight this fight. It's especially difficult when people are close to you. There's an emotional bond and a soul tie with people who are members of your own family. It's very difficult because people of your own family, a prophet is not recognized in his own home or his, his hometown or his household. And so when God uses you to give a prophetic word or to speak the truth, they won't have any of it because they remember you before you were saved. And they think this salvation is just a passing fantasy. Oh, well, a, a fancy, and he's just got like a, he's got a virus. He'll get over this Christian stuff. And that's what my family thought. Oh, he'll get over it. It's a passing phase. It's like a virus. I never got over it. In fact, I'm getting more and more into it. Amen? I'm getting more and more hungry for God and for his word. It gets more and more intense. The desire deepens. The enthusiasm to know God and to know His Word and to study His Word is overwhelming. That should consume us. Zeal for His house should consume us. Not insecurity, not fear, not insufficiency. Insufficiency says, you don't have what it takes. You don't have enough training. You don't have enough education. You don't have resources. You don't have experience. You don't have the temperament. You don't have the personality. You don't have the opportunity. And that's what the devil will pound into your mind. Don't listen to him. Listen to God. It's very easy to listen to God. This is where God first speaks. And when he speaks through his Holy Spirit, he is always confirming this. You will find that these chronic people, chronic insecurity people, they will be in a place where they are ne nothing satisfies them. They can achieve almost anything. There is a man who is in government. He is a high government official. I won't name him. He is very impressive to, to, uh, uh, in stature. He's very impressive in his credentials, in his education, in the law, in public administration. He has been in public service all of his life, and he is one of the most insecure people you could ever imagine. He has everything the world says you need in order to be secure. And it proves your security comes from Christ and not from the things of this world. This world will never satisfy your flesh because insecurity is a function and a manifestation of the flesh and not of the spirit. And so you can never satisfy it. You can never satisfy the flesh. The flesh can never get enough wealth. The flesh can never get enough, enough prominence. The flesh can never get enough success. The flesh can never get enough accolades. And those with chronic insecurity, you can never commend them enough. You can never pat them on the back enough. And they will expect you to constantly affirm them. This can be wearying. Amen? I'm just talking turkey with you here. I want you to be armed and dangerous to the devil. Amen? I want you to be walking in boldness. Because when you're walking in insecurity, you fear man and you don't fear God. But we as children of God, we will fear God and not man. When you deal with people in the world, especially who are chronically insecure, these people will always be suspicious, like Saul was suspicious of David. Herod was an example of this. 
Here was a king who was wealthy, and he heard that a king was born in Bethlehem. And what did he do? He had all the, those boys, those baby boys, two years and under, he had them executed because of his insecurity and his fear. Eventually, God cut him down. He just dropped. But it was insecurity that kept him. Insecurity that bound him. Insecurity that caused such envy, such fear, that he had to take matters into his own hands. And that's dangerous. Amen? And so consider that. That when you deal with such people, you've got to be prayed up. And it may even mean that you may spend a couple of days fasting a meal or just not going home and turning on the TV or the screen and just being quiet before God and saying, God, I need wisdom. This is beyond me. This, this issue here is far beyond my capacity to deal with it. I need heaven's resources. I need God's power, not man's power. I'm not going to deal with this through psychology. I'm not going to deal with this through a motivational sermon. I need the power of God because the kingdom of heaven is not a matter of talk, but of power. And we need the power of God to set the captives free. Because they are suffering and they are tormented and the devil is having his way with them. And this should evoke from us great compassion and great empathy because we have all been victims of the evil one. And so we do not want to see people remain in a bound state. We don't want people to completely absorb themselves in their own insufficiencies, in their own needs, in their own inadequacies, and wondering whether they are approving of people are approving of them or not. And so your identity is in Christ. When you look at the Word of God, it's like a mirror, James says. And when you look in the mirror of God's Word, you should see a reflection of Christ because that's who you are being transformed into, His image. Do you see that? We are becoming more and more Christ-like. Outwardly, we're wasting away. Inwardly, we're being transformed. And so you want to know your identity in Christ? It's in the Scripture. That's the mirror. And that's how you know that you belong to Jesus. And that's who you really are. Because the devil will want to define you. God will want to refine you. The devil will want to define you and confine you. And disable you. So that you're not effective for Christ. Amen. How many of you know that what we're talking about affects people's relationships? It affects people's relationships. People in such an extreme state cannot have sound and healthy friendships and relationships. Amen? Lord, deliver us. Deliver our families, O oh God. Help us and strengthen us and empower us to be victorious over these spirits that want to take entire families down, especially families of the people of God.